Hey, Adrian, you got uh, so much going on, you know, this week with the All-Star Game and, uh, of course, the Hall of Fame. What's it like with your son being eligible for the draft, and will you spend the next few days with him? Uh, it's it's, it's going to be fun. I think that, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks have been a little crazy. Uh, I was excited to come here and uh, be part of this event uh, and be part of the draft probably, too, uh, knowing that my son has a possibility uh, see what he decides to do. But, you know, it's been fun, so I'm looking forward to it. And it, uh, him growing up, was it tough because everybody knows that who his dad was? Was it more pressure on him? Uh, it's a question for him, I think. I think uh, I always tried to be in the backside, just be there, but not known. Uh, let him do his thing. Uh, let him uh, struggle his own thing, and uh, we can try to fix some stuff. But, you know, I always try to keep giving him his space. Um, but for the most part, he really handled it well. Thank you. Michael, I know you guys are having a lot of fun with all these guys, all your old teammates around, but when the first pitch is thrown, you guys have always been competitive. Do you think it's going to get competitive? You're going to feel the adrenaline and the juices flow? Hold on, hold on. Let me answer his phone call first. <laughs> ne where's that? What's Nevada, Texas? Is that, is that a city? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just north of here. Uh, sorry. Sorry, Nevada. <laughs> um, we didn't even know Watson actually was playing. <laughs> what is that? Just kidding. Um, yeah, I think so. I think, for one, I, I wanted to make sure that the players have a great experience. But um, I think A.B. and I are both going to try. He already told me he's 2-0, and and he intends to go 3-0. and So I don't think either one of us would do this thing if, once the game started, we didn't want to win it. Um, obviously, yeah, to, to your point, it's great to see these guys. There's a lot of guys who I haven't seen in a while. So it was great to give you know handshakes, hugs, and see old teammates again and old friends again. But um, I think the best, one of the best things we can do for these for these kids is obviously be here to support them, but to let them know that when a game start, you, you play to win. That's the whole goal. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see all those guys, you know, here. Uh, got to see a couple guys I haven't seen in a while. It's been fun having back, being back in the clubhouse and enjoying this. Um, and for the part of being competitive, yeah, I, I definitely, I just saw him spying on my lineup right now. True story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when you walk in, yeah, <laughs> you know we, we we know the game. We 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 uh, we enjoy playing the game, and we know how fun can be. But at the same time, we want to win. Yeah, we, it's no doubt that we want to win. We want to uh, compete and make sure the guys have fun, enjoy it. This is a privilege to be here. Uh, it's, it's the best players in the minor league. You know, they have the great future to be in the big league soon soon enough. So yes, we want to win, but at the same time, we want to be able to uh, let those guys enjoy the game and and, and produce and actually it's a showcase for them. To showcase people can see them, what they can do, and hopefully they can be in the big league soon. Question for Adrian and, and Michael Young. Working with these kids here, uh, you were both known as leaders in the clubhouse here. How do you impart knowledge to these young kids about doing things the right way and being accountable and being a leader? Because already people are looking at them to be the next stars for their teams. Well, first of all, for me, I, I learned a lot from this guy. You know, uh, when I got here in Texas, he was the first guy to greet me here, and uh, uh, he was a leader here, and I learned a lot from Michael. He's, uh, he's a great guy to follow, uh, and I always try to keep uh, learning from guys, from different guys, how to lead and how to be part of a, a big group. So for, for us, it's, it's, you know, we, we talk about, I think he talked about uh, in, the, in the meeting earlier in the breakfast, that's like, you know, first of all, you need to understand, like, it's people watching you, it's people looking at you, and, and, and not just what you do in the fields, uh, how you uh, carry yourself around other people, and what kind of person you are. So for those guys here, you know, we're going to talk about that today, just not to be a good player, but a good human being. And uh, you, you always want to create leaders, not only for the, for the game, but just for, for life, too. Yeah, I think, um, to Adrian's point, and not to return the compliment, but it's easy for this guy. I mean, the one thing I loved about him, is that working? Good? OK. Um, is that Adrian didn't just show up at 7 o'clock and punch in, punch out. Like, there are certain teammates that you play with and you love to play with because they really play to win. And when I played against Adrian, I, I admired him a lot because, one, he played through injuries, he's a tough dude, played hard, teammates loved him. And it's easy as an opponent to really, really like and respect guys like that. But then when I played with him, I was like, man, at 7, like when the first pitch goes and the lights go on, like he's not just here. He's here to win. And like, especially when you have a good team and a guy like that walks in the door, you're like, we you immediately, before the first game is even played, we're like, we just got so much better. Obviously, he's a great player. But just the way he approaches the game. So if we can 
and it's one day, so it's hard to make big connections. But if there's one thing that I can, you know, that we can do to talk to these kids about is, hey, man, when you're when you are playing, yes, of course, you're having fun, and that's all part of it. But play to win. Show up and play to win, and everyone's in a feed off of that. Uh, this is a question mostly for Adrian, but certainly Michael might have an opinion on it as well. Adrian, the last few days you've been doing so many things here in Arlington related to the All-Star Game, and then you're also prepping for the Hall of Fame. My question is, do you find yourself having to do all of these things, talking to people, do you find yourself more relaxed than when you were a player, when you had to produce on the field and talk to people, whether it was reporters, or in a setting like this, do you find yourself more relaxed now doing these things? Well, I, I can I cannot say I'm relaxed for the last couple of weeks, <laughs> but definitely the whole thing about coming here and doing this, yes, relax. You don't have the stress of producing and uh, being part of a team that you want to help any any way you can. Yes, more relaxed because you're from more than the outside looking in. Um, yes, the last couple of weeks is gonna it's been kind of crazy busy, and the week coming up too. So uh, I'm trying to enjoy the whole thing. I'm, I'm really enjoying this right now. Uh, the only part that I'm enjoying thinking about the speech that I have to get up there and and, and do some curveballs. <laughs> uh, that's not gonna be that's not gonna be that's not gonna be good, by the way. Um, but yeah, this is this is this is a great time. It's a great time for me, and and not only because of me, and I'd be able to see great friends and and, and great guys that I look up to. Um, but having my son here and enjoying all this all, all this stuff because is it, is a plus for me. Uh, I just always wanted to be able to uh, be in places that I, he can enjoy too because he loved baseball more than me, actually. So to be able to be around this clubhouse with these guys and, and bring him back to this uh, future game uh, for me is, is a plus. Adrian, what, what do you know about Sebastian Walcott? And then how difficult is it for an 18-year-old to be a professional and do the things that you guys are talking about? knowing that people are watching him? Well, it's, I, I can't say that I can relate because, you know, I think everybody knows who he is. Um, but as, as a player, you have to just do, you, do your thing. You know, it's so much going on with that guy, and, and, and I'm, a, I'm a fan. Um, but I can't speak for himself. I don't know exactly. I haven't had a, a conversation with him yet. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a, he has a good problem. It's a good problem to have been in his position, so, you know, I, I can't say more about that. Adrian, I don't know if you've noticed or have seen the videos of Eli De La Cruz and the pride he has in learning English, even interviewing teammates. When you see the young kids here, the Latinos, Dominicanos, Puerto Ricanos, the importance of learning English, of being articulate, can you tell me a little bit about your growth in the Dodgers Academy from not speaking English to learning English and the importance for all these kids to be able to speak that second language. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's funny because we were just talking about that with my son yesterday. Um, that uh, when I first saw, I think it was a month ago, two months ago, spring training, I think, when he first got back from, what is that? Spring training was like four months ago, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> time just goes by. Retired um, life, bro. Yeah, I know. Um, and I saw his interview when he was, he said that he wanted to do interviews in English, which he didn't speak English whatsoever last year. And for me as a, as a Dominican fellow, and as a, you know, my third language is, is English, you know, for my first language is love. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and for me, I was a fan, I became even more a fan, because I understand me growing up in Dominican, not speaking one, one word English, I'm still learning, I can speak English to save my life. Um, but I know what it takes, and I know how easy it could be when you actually can uh, express what you want. You know, when you have, you, you're in a, an environment where you don't know what people are saying about you, and you can express yourself, it's, it's difficult to be in that. You can, you can enjoy what you do. So for a guy like him to force himself to learn this, the, 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 the language, which is probably gonna be more than half of the, of the year, is it, great to see, because a lot of the Latino guys to emphasize on, on being able to learn the language and communicate uh, because, you know, they expect to be here for a long time. So it's, it's, it's great to see. Bob, Joe. Hey, Michael, when uh, 
when Adrian came and you became teammates, when did it hit you or how quickly did you think, hey, I might be playing with a future Hall of Famer here? And I know you touched on it, but mm -hmm. what really jumped out at you about him? Yeah, um, playing against him when he was in Seattle, it's weird. I, I don't know how AB is, but like I, I never focus like on on stats. You know who's good. Like you watch Adrian take ground balls, you're like okay, he's really good at this. You watch him like hit two homers in a game, okay, Adrian's got a lot of power. But then you play with somebody, and you gain this whole another level of respect for the way they do it, right? It's um, you know, he's 0 for three, but he like he doesn't give that fourth one away. It's boom, base hit in the right field, and he gets momentum into the next day. It's again, he's showing up, doesn't give anything away, never takes a playoff on defense. So all those small things. You start looking at that, and you're like, wow, this guy's a really, really special player. Um, and it didn't, again, it didn't take long once we were teammates for me to see that. And then you combine that with the fact that he was a big league starter when he was 11 years old, and that's a <laughs> lot of numbers that are, like, stacked up. And next thing you know, it's, um, you know, you look up at what he's able to do. And I was like, damn, like, look at, look at his numbers right now. And then he goes on, and sure enough, in his 30s, he just crushes the league. And next thing you know, he's a, a slam dunk first ballot guy. So, again, a huge honor to play with him, for sure. Thank you. Steven, down here at the bottom of the line. So Adrian, we've been talking about this speech for months. How much of it is done? It, it's, it's done. It's just got, got it done two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I, it's, 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 it's done, but just how delivered that's going to be the, the big part. I, can, I can't speak English for once. And once I get there, I, I'm gonna get back. It's gonna, it's gonna be a mess, but you know, I'm gonna get up there somehow. Just use your love language. Huh? Just use your love language. Yeah, I, I should. Yeah, That's easy. yeah I'm Please gonna do that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Appreciate let, it. Let me ask you this. As yeah. you've prepared for this and learned about the Hall of Fame process and gone through all this since you found the word that you were getting in, how much have you learned and have you given yourself time to just really think about what you're going into and the names that you're gonna be associated with for the rest of your life? To be honest, I, I, I for a second, a couple of times, I, I, I thought about it, but I'm being so concentrated. Jesus Christ. I mean, really? <laughs> Evan Graham, people. Evan Graham just got here. Slams his Christ. backpack Jeez. in anything? Go ahead, Adrian. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yellow, yeah, bright shirt. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. In front. Yeah. Probably, you know what? I'm going to get out of here. I know. It's, okay. Yeah. Uh, because of Jonas here, I'm going to stay here. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, you know, I. The whole process of Hall of Fame thing is, is I'm honored, and I never thought about being in that group whatsoever, uh, and I'm, I'm grateful. But it hasn't sink in yet. It is, it's been a lot of things that I have to uh, prepare for, um, getting ready for a lot of stuff. Um, and like, like I repeat again, like this whole speech thing doesn't really get me to enjoy the way I should, but I can I can't wait to be there, try to enjoy it. But I think once the speech is over, it's then when I'm going to hide, maybe. If I don't screw it up too bad, <laughs> you know. Uh, then is when I'm going to probably realize where I'm at, the people are next to me, and what I have accomplished, and the, the group that I, somehow I'm, I'm going to be associated with. Can, can, I, can I double back on that? Sorry, I don't mean to butt in here. But like, he's doing all this in his second language. I mean, I can't imagine how difficult that is really we tease him all the time when he when we talk <laughs> but I mean this is this is not his third language apparently right <laughs> but I mean I can't imagine how difficult that is and like to your point you're talking about young players now making this huge effort to speak English I mean you ask players here born in the states and they can't go to Chipotle they get this is Spanish to them was already extra guacamole at Chipotle that's their Spanish for the day right so it's it's really incredible what these guys are able to do come here and they put in massive efforts to one get to know their player, their teammates in a clubhouse, uh, you know, live everyday life in a different society. Um, I give, you know, Adrian just um, talk about what he did as a player, but to be able to do this, to write a, a you know, Hall of Fame speech and to try and cover his whole life for people who have meant something to him and do it in English really is an incredible thing. It really is. Thank you, Michael. Adrian, uh, one of the things that kind of stood out about you as a, as a player was um, there, there was uniqueness to the way that you played in addition to the production, right? Like whether it was uh, the shuffling of the feet after a take or like, you know, sometimes appealing your own check swing. Um, how aware were you of some of, the, uh, of some of the unique traits that you demonstrated on the field that uh, ended up being pretty entertaining to watch? And who entertains you when you watch them playing baseball right now? 
Well, thank you for calling it unique. I think it was more weird and, <laughs> and you know, stuff that that I used to do, but uh, but it wasn't by design. It it just is ways that I was always trying to figure out how to be better and more consistent. And I like do I, do, I did things just to to try to make myself better. Um, the show for the feet, I, I don't know. I didn't like it. I don't know how it came out. It was when I was aggressive and I didn't swing until my feet just go. I, I couldn't help it. You know, all the things that I do, yeah, that was just stupid, you know. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I stupid, Some crazy things that I used to do, you know, but part of it was just trying to have fun, enjoy the game. Uh, and I think that was one of the main reasons why I played for so long and why I, I, I got to actually enjoy what I did understanding that it was not a job, it was just a game that, you know, we get paid to play. It was, we have so much passion. I, I love that game, so why not enjoy it? Um, and I was trying just to do whatever I could to just be happy and, and enjoy the game. Uh, some people like some stuff I did, some people didn't like it, but, you know, I would just be myself. Right? You know, be myself. Um, but I've seen a lot of guys doing different things now. You know, I, I watch uh, 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 Soto, which do some, some similar. Um, and other guys do crazy stuff. Like some guys do a little too much, but uh, you know, every, everyone, <laughs> everyone has their own different things to do. But you know what? I, I didn't try to do it for laugh or make people, f you know, make joke, uh, make fun of other people. I just did it because it came out. It came out of me and I feel comfortable doing it. You know, it's a couple of things that was infamous, what you, whatever you call it, that pull that. That would just happen because the guy told me, "Yeah, hey, you get over there, okay." I like, pull the thing <laughs> with me, but I, I didn't try to be funny. But but it's just I would just try to be myself and enjoy the game, and and, and that's that's how it happened. Uh, Michael, if I can follow up, how much did you? What, when did when did it occur to you, like as a teammate of Adrian's day to day, like when did when did you start enjoying and picking up on some of uh, the uniqueness uh, of, uh, of of some of the elements that he was doing, and he, how much did you appreciate? That? I remember the first time he did the the feet thing. We were in spring training in Peoria. He had just signed with Seattle, and I was playing short and top of, or bottom of the first, and he takes a pitch and he starts stomping his feet, and I was like, what? I, I again. The only thing I knew about Adrian was that he had big years in L.A. coming off a really, really big year. Uh, but I didn't really, because he's in the other league, I didn't really see him play like on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So it's the first time I had seen that. Um, so I thought it was very weird, too. Um, <laughs> but uh, in, in playing with Adrian, like you said, he, it just, he's just being himself. It wasn't something that he kind of like set out to do. It just kind of came out. And I remember one time we were, I heard him say, give an answer, and I kind of related to it. I didn't do anything like that. But he was talking about when we, when we first came into the league, Young players weren't supposed to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was you get into the clubhouse, you shut up, be seen, don't be heard, that kind of thing. Nowadays, young players are encouraged to be themselves. So I think Adrian, remember, he was talking, he had a point in his career. He's like, man, like, okay, I've, I'm going to be myself now. Like, I don't need to. And I think it probably coincided with his career, like, hitting a whole other gear, too. So, um, yeah, I, I had a front row seat for it. It was always fun to see. But, again, it was fun to see because it wasn't manufactured or it was just him being him. And you always respect that from teammates when they're just being themselves. I know we're talking about all the weird stuff, and there is a lot of it. Um, and there are those indelible moments, like you talked about the pull in the on deck circle and shtick with pu with with Elvis and all that. But one of the more indelible moments for me in your career was the three thousandth hit and the celebration with your kids on the field. Um, and and I'm I'm curious, like, where that image ranks in your head in terms of your career, and just how significant it is for you to be able to celebrate this and have your kids have been a big part of your career. Yeah, Evan, you're, you're right. I think the, the 3,000 hit was, was number one in my career uh, for different reasons. Because number one, I never expected, expect myself to be there. I, I, when I, I came to the, to the big leagues, and, and like Michael said, which is a great point, like when you came to the big league, you're just happy to be there. You sit in the corner, you don't say nothing, tell you jump, you jump. And because that's how it was uh, in our days. Um, you know, I think nobody knew who I was for three years in the clubhouse because I just turned my corner, do whatever I was asking because I, I was happy to be there. Um, but back then, I never expected to play so long. Uh, I never thought about being even the conversation of 3,000 hits. It was not even in my mind. I, I didn't play for numbers, number one, and I didn't see myself as a player can get there, you know. Um, 
because I remember, I think it was 2001, I, I played with Ricky in, in LA, and I was just amazed the numbers he had. I wasn't a number number guy, but you know, when they keep putting it on the, on the scoreboard, you see the numbers he had, like, wow, this is unbelievable. I never thought I was gonna be in the conversation of being with Ricky and hits whatsoever. It was, it was a far reach for me. Uh, but when I got to that number, it was incredible to think that I got there. Uh, but number two, it's just the way the Rangers uh, did everything with my family, uh, having the logo in right field, and, and uh, somehow they sneak it by me. I don't know how. Um, you know, having the family in the field and having them come in and to, uh, to hug me uh, and, and, and say, say th wonderful things to say to me that day, just seeing them come in in the field, for me, is that's number one. It goes, you know, I love baseball. That was my passion. But, you know, I, I'm a family man, and I, I, I do anything for my family. And the fact that the family was there, my wife, my, my, my kids, my, my parents, it was a moment that I will never forget. And for, for that reason, that's, that's definitely, definitely number one. What are the things on the camera? Uh, private things, even stay, stay in line. Yeah, I can tell you what it says. It's, it's graphic, what it says. It's graphic. <laughs> 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 Michael, um, Tuesday somebody's going to win the MVP award at the All Star Game. Can you go back to your experience of it and, and what that person is going to be feeling? That night? Yeah, it was that was a fun night. Um, you know, that it's, triple. Yeah, <laughs> speed. See that? Like that. Yeah, um, it it's a really really cool moment. Like in, at the at the time when you're playing, you are. It's an exhibition game, right? Um, in at the time they had the the rule with they decided in the World Series too, which was silly. But um, you knew it kind of didn't mean something. But I remember in that, like honestly, in those in that at bat, um, I had a bit a bit of a selfish moment. Um, we had a guy on first, um, Paul Canerco, who got pinch run for, and Troy Gloss was hitting, and I was on deck. There's two outs, Trevor Hoffman's on the mound, and Troy hits one like down the line, in the air. And I knew it was going to be fair. It was just if it's going to be a homer or a ground rule double. Now, if he hits a homer, Mariano comes in, game's over. But if it bounces over, I'm up a second and third. So I'm like, bounce, 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 <laughs> bounce, bounce. If we're in a regular season game, if we're in a spring training game, I'm not thinking that. In an all-star game, I was like, bounce, bounce. Bounces over, I was like, don't yes. run off, let's go. So again, you do have a bit of a different mindset uh, for a game like that. Um, because now kind of everything was on the line and it made that bat a lot more fun, especially even before, you know, the result. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, at the end of the game, we, uh, you know, got a truck and gave it to my dad. It still sits in his driveway. Um, <laughs> uh, so it was a really, really cool moment. All-star games are great. They really are fun. Um, you know, no matter what, like a lot of times, you know, leading up to the game, you get asked, you know, do you want to go, you know, I always said, yeah, like I, I would love to go. Um, All-Star games really, really are a good time. Uh, you get to kind of like hang out with guys that you have a lot of respect for. Um, if, you, if you're lucky to go with a bunch of teammates, it makes it even better. Um, I know we went one year, we were coming off uh, going to the World Series, so we had our staff, a bunch of players. It was a blast and uh, a lot of special memories, but that was, that was definitely the best one. And, and real important question here. Um, can you take us through and guide us about the love language that he had in the clubhouse with you guys? I didn't know he had one. Um, uh, I think that's a, a probably very graphic, too. So I'm not, not going to say anything. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Adrian, this weekend, is there any Hall of Famer that you really want to meet? You never talked before. You always wanted to uh, say hello. There's plenty of them, plenty of them that I, I, I would love to shake their hands and, and, and tell them that I was a huge fan. You know? um, but I want to say who. Yeah, I want to say who. I figure we can finish up with Spanish, if that's okay, with Adrian. Um, Adrian, lo que significa todo este tiempo. Primero, estas actividades en el Juego de Estrellas, esto de Futuras Estrellas, y por supuesto, el Salón de la Fama. Lo que ha significado todo esto para ti, lo que está en tu mente, y cómo lo has manejado todo. 
Bueno, gracias. Orgulloso de estar aquí y que he tenido el chance de, de, de que me eh, seleccione para ser el manager de, de las futuras estrellas. Uh, tre tremendo talento en ese clubhouse. Y para mí es un orgullo estar aquí. Uh, este es mi tercera, tercera, este, tercer año haciendo esto y, y me ha gustado mucho. verdad que me gusta cómo todo se, se desenvuelve. Uh, y es, es un placer ver estos, estos muchachos aquí jugando y después de un año más tarde están en grandes ligas. Por eso me, me gusta este evento. Y con relación a Salón de la Fama, um, es, eh, tenemos tiempo esperando esto. Uh, va a ser un momento bien significativo para mí y mi familia. Eh, estamos tratando de disfrutar lo, lo, lo más que podamos. Uh, hay muchas cosas que están en movimiento, pero um, va a ser algo inolvidable para nosotros y esperamos tratar de, de, de disfrutarlo como se debe. Y, y este, estar agradecidos y, 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 y va a ser un honor estar en ese uh, podio con todo el mundo. Gracias. Yeah. Uh, necesito aprender más. <laughs> Again, thank you. Thank you guys.